What's up everybody, it's Robert from Pheasant Lane Farm. Jeffrey, that was for you. Today, I'm gonna go over the uh, Time Cutter 60 Series Toro. Been getting a lot of messages about this more. Um, bought it, I don't know, a month and a half ago. Uh, it's been wet here a lot, so I only have about six hours on it. And they told me to change the brake in oil anywhere between five and 10 hours. I got a little time now, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I did a video when I first bought this and I've been getting a lot of messages people want to know more about this more updates How do I like it after I've been using it? So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Let me turn the camera around. We'll do a walk around I'll tell you the things I like things. I don't like and uh, Things that are kind of indifferent on so I'll be right back Like I said, this is a 2020 Toro time cutter 60 I believe this is uh, model number 75760, if I'm not mistaken. I've mowed the yard uh, four or five times with this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far. I really don't have any major complaints. Uh, the two things I do kind of complain about, I'm sure they're just minor in details. So do a walk around. Has been used. I try and keep it clean, but that uh, doesn't always work. Uh, most of our property is wooded, so you can see you got a lot of scratches on that that are kind of inevitable. I've been trying to push the property lines back with the brush hog, but uh, like I said, it's been wet here, so I can only get so much done. This motor, I'm happy with this motor. This is the Toro's own, from what I've been told, 24 and a half horse commercial V twin. Uh, what does this say? 708 cc and uh, it's a pretty good size motor for this mower. Um, I like the wide stance it has and uh, it cuts very very clean. I like it. Um, thing I really do like compared to other zero turns I've operated in the past is I like how this just has a pedal. You push forward, you drop the pin in, quick easy deck adjust. This has the Smart speed control level. Um, I like that. Whether you want to go fast, slow, or a tow mode, I've been very happy with that. It's in tow mode because I have a 25 gallon sprayer. I was pulling with it the other day. The floor mat's a nice feature. I like these. I've never broke one on a mower before, but if you do break these cast aluminum things, you just take the bolts out and put a new one in. You don't total the lawnmower. They must have had a problem with people doing that because I know that's one of their big marketing pushes on this mower. The deck is, if I remember correctly, 10 gauge, iron forged. My brother bought one last year that was that styled deck. It's not just the stamped. He's been happy with it, and I've been happy with it. Um, on the deck, though, I will say it's a little different. You can see how far the deck sticks out on this side compared to this side. Once this flap is up, it's not even so the blades are kind of you know it sticks up sticks out a foot on this side all other mowers I've used 50 54 I just mow and then when I turn around I just pop my tra tire tracks and the tire tracks I made in the previous pass on this one I find myself uh, still doing that and then I'm wasting a foot of cut on each pass so I'm trying to teach myself to run this uh, that leveler wheel and my last pass, but uh, it works. But my first thought was if I'm wasting 12 inches every pass, I might as well have bought the 50 inch, but that's something I'm getting used to. Uh, going to a 60 overall, it's a big deck. Even maneuvering it in and around the garage at times, like I have a king quad that's parked in here most of the time. Go about a tractor. Oh, there's some chickens. I stay on my garage. And, uh, so that was just kind of getting kind of a thing I had to get used to was that offset of that deck. Um, that's my first kind of thing that's I don't like about it. I understand if they would center the deck, then your chute would really be hanging out the other side. But uh, just something I gotta get used to. I have noticed one of these pins fell out already. I don't know how because I always step on and off the front of it. But uh, luckily I found it laying in the driveway. One other thing that... I wish was a little different. If you look over here, you know, the tank fill is way back here. 
and then you have a the fuel level viewer up there so you would think that most of that is a fuel tank well it's not my dad has a 50 inch toro and i believe he has bigger fuel capacity than i do that is a pretty small tank what they do is it wraps around that linkage so it's just a little small in my opinion um i have to fill it every time i mow this yard my dad actually came over the other day i was doing some things and we were supposed to get like four days of storms and he said hey i want to try your new lawnmower out you mind if i mow your yard and i was like hell no i don't care who mows my yard and uh as he was pulling it into the garage it ran out of fuel so it sat there until i got home from work and i had to get it back in here so i wish fuel capacity was a little higher but it's nothing i'm going to complain about too much um this is a pretty big deck to have those that deck clean out system so how i clean underneath the deck is i just hook a strap to the bucket of the kubota pick it up and then i can really get underneath there with a high pressure hose or even take it easy with the pressure washer the hydrostatics seem pretty good on this. I get good traction. Um, I like how wide these front wheels are. Um, I will say though, this, the right hydrostat um, seems to operate a little different than the left. Like when I put the bars in the neutral position to put them in the parking position like they are now, it really wants to jolt backwards. I don't know if that's something I gotta take up with the dealer, but those are just kind of my first impressions other than that i'm very happy with it the seat is very comfortable um, this the seat adjusts adjust forward and back and it, overall it's just a good looking more and um, it does very good on our property there's a couple trees that were taken down that currently it's kind of hard to get in between them but uh, that will be addressed soon so let me change the camera and we will start changing the oil on this bad boy. I'm pretty interest, interested to try the new uh, style change system on these where they don't have a plug. And as always, assembled in America. I have no idea where the parts come from, but at least it supports an American job. All right, we'll be right back and get that oil change done. So the Wolf's Head is what the dealer gave me. And I really wanted to switch this over to full synthetic. So I bought a few quarts of the Toro full synthetic. They say you don't have to change the oil filter on the first oil change, which is the break in that they're supposed to do between five and 10 hours. But for $12, I'm going to just switch it. It's not that big of a deal. And uh, since we moved, I could not find my oil pan and funnels. So I uh, went and bought some all new stuff. All right, let's get going on this oil change. First thing you gotta do is this is pretty cool. I'm kind of uh, looking forward to trying that. There's uh, no drain plug on the bottom, anything like that. There's this fill hose. You pull this hose out. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Pull this down. It's a little hard to do the first time. I'm going to uh, set that there while I grab the oil pan. Put this under here and we're going to unhook this and I think I got to go underneath these cables here. Yep and oil's coming out pretty easy and I'm going to pop the oil fill off here get some oil coming out of there. So we'll let this drain and we'll be right back. So I picked up the back and the front real quick, put a piece of two by three in there, kind of get on a little more of a lean and uh, strain it pretty good. We'll go ahead and uh, pop that oil filter off. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, them silver streaks I can only imagine are fine metal shavings and there's quite a few of them coming out of there. So, well, I made a goof. I uh, got in my toolbox to get an oil filter wrench out. And they all must be at my dad's place or my brother's place. I think they're at my dad's from last time I was trying to work on one of the older farm tractors. So, luckily I was able to break this filter loose with my hands, um, put some paper towels under here, 
We've got the new filter here, still wrapped in plastic. And in case you're wondering, the part number is 136-7848P. So I'm going to go ahead and break this off the rest of the way. Hopefully I don't spill too much. It's important, I usually have blue shop towels, but I'm out right now. Make sure you don't leave any residue when you're changing the oil filter. Let's get it off this part that's going to be hard to get to once the filter's back on. Grab a new filter. I like to uh, put a little bit of oil on that O-ring. They said this oil is blue. Yeah, it's uh, very blue. So we'll go ahead and scrub this back on. Yeah, it even says on this one, apply a thin layer of oil. Everybody knows that. Tighten filter one turn after gasket comes in contact. It's a pretty standard oil filter. So, so right there, came in contact. Let me uh, tighten this up. Oil rags out of here. Want to cloth all this, don't want oil over everything. So there we're at half a turn. And once the letters get back to the top on this one, it is tight. There they are. So uh yeah, I guess uh, you don't even need an oil folder wrench on these. They go on pretty easy. So make sure that's on there snug. Wait for this to finish and we'll uh, top her off and start her up. All right, we got the oil finally stopped dripping for the most part. Um, one thing they did tell me is to put a tiny bit of grease on this nipple here where that tube slides up. Um, because the first time it was really hard to get off and uh, we will uh, put a tiny bit of grease around there and just check on that periodically and when I say a small amount of grease like it's a tiny amount and we will just put that on there good enough This back up through here. Wipe off the residue on that. Shove this back up through the cables. Goes on the bottom, goes on the top. Alright, so I should probably put it in first here. Slide that up. Pop that in, pop that in. We are good to go. My thoughts on this tube. It is uh it's very easy. But I do not think it's very efficient because it seemed to take forever to dry to uh, drain out, and it's supposed to be just a little over two quarts, two and a half quarts. Um, seemed to take a long time, but where the oil drain is on the engine on this frame, it's about the only way you can do it. So, all right, let's uh, top her off with some oil. Don't realize how much you like funnels until you, uh, or how much you need them until uh, you go to find one and you can't. So. I've never seen oil this color. They told me it was blue. 
Okay, so it's easy so you can read on the dipstick. But that is a uh, very blue oil. Never seen anything like that before. So, I'll get these filled up, these quarts in here, get everything buttoned up, and we'll start up and see if we have any leaks. So always make sure you dispose of this stuff properly. Um, a local car wash uses these so many times. I think cleaners come in them, but they're super heavy duty plastic. And uh, so I fill these up. I go through quite a bit. You know, there's a lot of oil in the tractor. I do oil changes. And then uh, usually on Facebook, you'll see somebody like, hey, anybody got any used oil? They either burn it or recycle it. So it's pretty easy to find. And uh, like I said earlier, there's a, a lot of shiny stuff in here. So I'm glad I did the break in at five hours. So I'm going to unscrew this here. Transfer all this into here. Yeah, I know around me they're not as popular, but you'll still find some farmers that use uh, waste oil heaters in their garages and shops. And, or recycle it, it's probably the best thing to do. So, alright, we will, uh, that should sit in there. We'll let that sit in there, drain out, and uh, we'll get the lawnmower started and see what happens. Got our clean dipstick. Gonna see where we're at now. That set a second. Oh wow, that is blue. As you can see, it's right on the line. They said it's blue, uh, so it's easier to see on a dipstick. It's actually above the uh, half mark. So we'll sit in here, start her up, check it where we are. I might have to add a little more. All right, we started it up. I pulled the dipstick out, wiped it off. It's been sitting back in there for a second. So let's see where we're at. I added two quarts so far. And we are right at the add line. So it's not focusing, but we're right at the add line. There we go. A little above the add line. So I've read every, anywhere from two quarts to two and a half quarts, changing the oil filter. I'll dump another half quart in and uh, call it good. So final thoughts on this more. I like it. It has the power. It has traction. It's easy to do maintenance on. Um, I'm not regretting my purchase. And I'll keep you updated on uh, the more I use it if I do have any issues. One thing that kind of caught me off guard is I've never seen this on a piece of equipment before where it says shut down engine at full throttle. I've never heard that before, but it's what I do. They said it's what this motor was designed to do. I don't know if it has anything to do with keeping fuel on the lines or what. Oh, my oil jug just fell over. Hey, at least it landed right side up. So I'm happy with this more. If you guys have any questions, um, shoot me a message. I did buy this from a local Toro dealer. I've seen now Tractor Supply is selling this. I'd rather give my money to a small local dealer. So I'm happy with it. Um, we're going to keep using it. Um, we just cleared out a couple acres out front with the bush hogs. I'm going out there right now with the tractor to knock down some more trees. Being the ground's so wet, they're knocking right over. And uh, potentially this could be mowing out there too. It depends how, uh, what we decide to plan out there. But, Great more. Um, the deck offset's a little weird for me. The shutting it off at full throttle is a little strange. But the blue oil is cool. It does show up. It smells kind of different. But I'm happy with it. If you guys have any questions, shoot me a message. I'm going to go out here and get some work done with the tractor before I got to go to work because it's too wet to mow. So thanks for watching. As always, if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button. And who do we have here? The famous Shelly chicken. As soon as you pick her up, she falls asleep. Oh, and she has a towel. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Take care. Have fun. Be safe.